Hey everybody, so today I've got a great project for you. This one's super easy and a great one for making your motorcycle look really kick-ass. So it's very common because of our boots to wear out the clutch cover on any one of these dirt bikes. My four-stroke or two-stroke has both uh, got some scuff marks on it, but uh, I've seen some really bad cover plates. Obviously you have too, but don't fret. It's super easy to restore those things and bring them back to new. So today I'm going to show you how to do that in your home shop. No special tools. You will have to have an air compressor and a paint gun, but really that's pretty much it. It's super, super easy. You're going to love this project and the results are absolutely amazing. So let's get going. First thing you have to do is drain all the oil, which I'm doing now. Next we take off these <coughs> fasteners. Take this O-ring off. Use my little screwdriver to pry up the O-ring. Okay, now we just clean that up a little bit and take it over for sandblasting. And then we will uh, put Cerakote on that. For this Cerakote job, I bought burnt bronze and this is the Cerakote that is the air dry brand or the air dry version of Cerakote the C series and I think this is the easiest to work with personally. I've used the ones that you have to induce heat in order for the Cerakote to adhere to the metal surface. Those are fine uh, but it's a lot of work. You got to use a catalyst. It's a lot more difficult. These air dry ones are excellent and uh, super easy to spray. If you can spray spray can paint you know that you get at the uh, hardware store you can spray this as well so I'm going for burnt bronze that seemed to be the closest color that I could find to this color the factory cover plate color so it'll be interesting to see how it goes after we spray it so my friend Eric uh, offered me his uh, sandblaster which I have actually never done this before so uh, stoked we're gonna we're going to sandblast this bad boy and do it kind of the right way. This is the way Cerakote recommends it. So, all right. All right. Kabam. Hey everybody, so it's early Saturday morning and a kind of a chilly morning, which is kind of unusual here in Houston. But today I'm going to finish a Cerakote project that I started last week. Uh, it's the clutch cover for my CR250. I uh, took it over to my friend Eric's house and sandblasted this thing with glass bead, which is the recommended way of doing the Cerakote. So today I'm going to hopefully beat this rain that's coming and Cerakote this thing and make it look really nice. I've got a couple other projects coming up later today too that'll be different videos, but I've got a big day planned. It's early morning. I'm planning on working out here in the shop all day. So uh, let's get going on the Cerakote. So I don't know if anybody's interested in this, but um, if you want to do your own YouTube videos, this is how I set mine up. I've got this uh, overhead cabinet and I connect this really cool articulating arm. This thing has just been a fantastic buy. I found it on Amazon. And uh, you know, it's nothing fancy. I've got these little shop lights and this overhead light to uh, get some light on my work surface and another one over here. And basically, I just illuminate my workshop desktop, which is, you know, a nice maple top. So anyway, if you want to do your own videos and you want to 
you know, see how I set it up. It's so amateurish. I'm, I'm almost embarrassed at how basic it all is, but that that's it. That's how I do it. So I sandblasted this thing, but one thing I was going to mention is that the manufacturer recommends sandblasting, and uh, that's great, but uh, you don't really have to sandblast it, in my opinion. I've used sandpaper, and it works just fine. A lot of times they'll tell you stuff that they just want to make sure they don't have any responsibility for it not working right, in my opinion. So, you know, I have sanded this stuff many times and sprayed it, and as long as it's clean, it's fine. So, But in this case, I sandblasted this thing, and uh, I'm just wanting to go over it here real carefully and just make sure that there's no glass beads left behind that are embedded into the surface of this metal. Um, I don't want to have any kind of little spots or, you know, weird contaminants or anything in there. So it's just a good idea to go through it and clean it up. So just using this brass brush for that, just clean it up real nice. So I mentioned about Cerakote that I picked this burnt bronze color, and this is the air dry version. I also mentioned that too. I really prefer the air dry over the, the two part system just because it's a lot easier. And uh, I also mentioned that I don't know if this color is gonna work out, but um, hopefully it's gonna be all right. So I rolled this thing around for a couple days to, to mix the media up inside there, just to make sure that it's all spread around really evenly. The manufacturer recommends shaking this for like five minutes and at first I thought that seemed weird but if you look at it closely like right down here you can see that there's um, media that is still in there like color and uh, it makes sense now you know that this thing really needs to be shaken a lot so shake the hell out of that thing you will not regret it so we're going to shake that real hard before we spray it and this is another product that is not recommended specifically by the manufacturer but this is a very common product in automotive painting and I have painted a lot of cars it's called wax and grease remover and it's made by a company called Ditzler and I've had this can probably now for 20 years and I have used it so many and so many different things It's great for cleaning grease in general and uh, but it's it's a the last step basically when you paint a car before you actually lay on the color you use this stuff and then you put on then you just go over it with a tack rag so then in this case just uh, always make sure that when you're using this acrylic clean and if you want to use acetone you can that's what the manufacturer recommends but it's a little bit more expensive than this stuff and so i like to use this wax and grease remover and like i say look at how gross this is anyway and then so uh also i went over this thing really carefully with a q-tip because i just wanted to make sure that there was no gook in between these letters and stuff so to me it's just it's better to do too much than too little because when it comes to painting, preparation is far more important than the application process itself. So, you know, clean it, clean it, clean it, and then clean it again. So I went into a lot of detail here, basically, you can see. And then finally, just keep going over the product until, you know, you get a clean rag. So I used a shop towel for this. It's like those disposable shop towels. And you just go over and over and over until, you know, you just have almost no uh, dark spots left on your rag. And it takes a little bit of time, but you know, it's really important to do a good job of this part and make sure that you get this thing as clean as possible so there's no contaminants in the uh, surface when you paint. So I got that thing pretty darn clean. And now I'm gonna take it outside and spray it, which the EPA would probably kill me if they knew that, but this has a low toxicity level ammonia is the main media or the main uh, chemical in it which evaporates so not the best but there you go anyway i found this egg crate thing looks like it'd be a pretty good surface for painting so uh anyway let's give it a shot i'm getting ready to paint so let's uh, shake the hell out of the cerakote and it's always a good idea to put a filter in. You never know if there might be some kind of crap in the paint. So I always use a filter when I pour stuff into my paint gun. I recommend the same for you. For me, I don't have a special like high-end air compressor. I have this little, you know, shop one. That's something like a contractor might use to run a nail gun or something for like trim work. And, uh, you know, it's nothing fancy, so you don't have to have like a super high-end compressor because this thing only runs 20 PSI. And as for my gun, I don't have anything super special there either. This is a little China gun that you can buy, you know, from Amazon or something like that. I probably spent, I don't know, $20, $30 on it, max, max. And uh, 
I've done a lot of spraying with this piece of crap. Surprisingly, it's held up pretty well. I don't even remember where I got it, but it's been pretty good. So, you know, the bottom line is you don't need a tremendous amount of special equipment to do these Cerakote jobs. So it's recommended that you paint the difficult surfaces first. So like around these little bosses where the screws go through, I'm gonna go through those first and then try to get inside this Honda logo because there's a lot of you know, angles basically to that. Then we'll spray the face of it. Looks pretty kick-ass in my opinion. Now we just gotta let it dry. So I picked burnt bronze for the Cerakote color and I thought I'd just show you how it stacks up next to my CRF 250R. It looks pretty darn close. It really does, honestly. I was expecting this to be a little less close than that, but it looks really, really close to the OEM color. So, I mean, you can decide for yourself, but to me, that's a pretty good outcome. And the tester size for this, which I only use like a third of it for this cover plate, was like maybe $35, I think. So this is really, really inexpensive. Plus it's fun. You're gonna enjoy it. If you like to work with your hands and do stuff in your shop and trick out your bike, you'll have a lot of fun. And there's a lot of other colors too if you don't want the OEM look like I do. So anyway, pretty close. Hey everybody, so I hope you enjoyed this Cerakote video. As you can tell, it's not difficult to do. You can do it, if you can spray, spray paint from the Home Depot or whatever, you can spray Cerakote. You do have to have, you know, a few special things. You have to have the air compressor and you have to have an, a paint gun. But, you know, if you already have those things and you're creative and you, you know, have the ambition to, to do it, you can save a lot of money because uh, sending your stuff off to get Cerakoted is not cheap. Plus, there's a whole lot of things on a motorcycle that you can Cerakote. So this is just one. I Cerakoted so many things, it's unbelievable. And so, for sure, having the equipment has paid for itself in my case. I'm trying to make my videos a little bit more professional. I'm going to put some links for some stuff uh, down below in the description. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And so does YouTube. If you're trying to uh, create a presence in YouTube, you have to get thumbs up and you have to get subscribers. So if you thumbs up and subscribe, I'll keep making more videos. I've got a lot of other, other stuff coming uh, related to this 250 build that I've been uh, working on for a while. I've actually produced a lot of uh, raw footage. I just haven't edited it all yet, So, but it's coming. So again, if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, get in your garage, enjoy yourself, have fun with your hands and uh, tear up the next Cerakote project. So good luck and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.